Would you like to know how to make your business more highly visible on the internet? Are you looking to get a new website or perhaps even to improve the performance of an existing one? I'm also guessing that you probably get harassed on the phone by these guys from Delhi or Manila calling you up, telling you they're going to get you on the first page of Google or even from local tech heads who sometimes just like making it sound more complicated than it really is, just to make themselves sound smarter. And then to make matters even worse, Google's always changing the way that their algorithms determine how they rank pages. So just when you start to get a bit of research and it starts to make sense, they go and change everything and then it becomes confusing all over again. So all these factors and more can make it pretty difficult to get your head around the search engine optimization or SEO stuff, when in actual fact it's actually a lot more simple than it sounds as I'm about to show you here in this video. So look, if you're at the point where you realize that print and letterbox advertising has kind of gone the way of the dodo and you realize that he who has the best SEO wins the race, then there's some essential basic fundamental understanding that you've got to have. Otherwise, it's like trying to shop around for a trustworthy mechanic if you don't even have the basic understanding. You know, They're going to see you coming. They're going to charge like a wounded bull and you're not going to know whether you're getting a dart or whether you're getting the real deal. So in this video, I'm going to show you what's behind the curtain. I'm going to show you some of the secret tricks that the big boys in the industry don't want you to see. In fact, I reckon by the time this video is over, you probably won't want your competitors to know this stuff either. So you know those scenes in the Matrix movies where they just sort of upload years of training knowledge into their brains like in a split second? Well, similarly, in a moment from now, by the time this video is finished, you're going to have all the basic understanding that you need uploaded into yours. So that way, you're going to be able to get ahead in the race. Moreover, this stuff is going to save you years of trial and error. And it's going to also save you tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, as well. So look, you might want to go grab yourself a pen and paper and take some notes here because I'm about to give you for free in practical, down-to-earth, simple, easy-to-understand terminology, the top 10 most powerful yet simple SEO secret tricks and loopholes exposed. So welcome to the Google landscape. Now this is the basic stuff you've got to get down pat first. All right, so let's Google something to start off with and I'll show you what I mean. So you see these search results right up the top here and down to the right hand side. These are the sponsored links. So you might hear these referred to as Google AdWords or pay per click because as the name suggests, you pay a certain number of cents or dollars for every time that someone clicks on your ad. Yes, even when your competitors sit there clicking on them just to waste your money. Now there are certainly some advantages to AdWords and pay-per-click advertising. I'm not going to go into great detail in this video, however, suffice it to say this is the thing you need to know about the paid advertising spaces on Google search results. And that is that up to 90% of people are simply going to ignore or just skim over search results if they realise that they're paid ads. So the ones down the side, yeah, not very effective. The ones up the top, they'll get you some good results because a lot of people don't realise that they're paid ads. So it sort of blurs into the natural or organic search engine section. That's the section that people's eyes are naturally going to skim towards. So modifying your website or creating strategic link building to manipulate the search engine so that your result climbs higher in the rankings, that's what search engine optimization is about. SEO is about getting found in the organic section of Google where most of the eyes are naturally going to be looking. So being found in the pay-per-click section I think is a bit like renting space on Google. Whereas investing in SEO, that's more like building your own investment property. It's going to take a little bit longer before you start to see results, but it's worth it in the long run because as you slowly start to climb your way up towards the top, once you get up there, it's very hard for other people to bump you off as long as you're looking at hiring the right SEO guys that really know their stuff. For example, I've done SEO work on websites that rank for highly competitive keywords. Now, because we did it right, um, it takes a while. It can take up to a year, maybe up to even two years if the words are really super competitive before it gets right up to that number one spot. But there's examples that I've done where they're just staying there now at number one. No more work is needed. Nobody else can bump them off because of the way that we did it. And for those of you really wet behind the ears, when I say key words, what that means is literally the words that people key in when they're doing a Google search. So for example, landscaper Sydney, uh, photographer Melbourne. Uh, banana farmer, Brisbane, or whatever people search for up there. Obviously the thing to remember though is some keyword combinations are going to be far more competitive than others. Now that's the basics covered for you. So lesson number one, you can play around with pay-per-click advertising if you want to give it a try, but my strong suggestion is that if you're in it for the long haul, invest in smart SEO strategies to get you found in the organic search results for Google. And that's what the rest of this video is all about. Now I make it a regular habit to speak with the competition of my clients just to compare and find out what's going on for them. And what I usually find is that they're usually ranking for about five, maybe up to ten sets of keywords, and they're usually getting what they would say some results. But of course what I know is that they're only getting maybe 30 to 40% of what they could be getting. Now when you speak to them, they'll say that their SEO works. 
just like a lot of old school guys still say that letterbox advertising works. Uh, I'm actually glad that they think that way, of course, because it keeps them blind. Here at High Viz, we say that they have SEO satisfaction syndrome, which basically means that they're blissfully ignorant of what they're missing out on. Now, if you want to see what they're missing out on, then perhaps you'd like to see the difference between SEO that works and SEO that dominates. So here at High Viz Online Marketing, this is how we define what SEO domination means. So let's say, for example, you're in the carpet cleaning business, just an example, and you service all of Sydney. Now, you go out, you find 100 random people scattered throughout Sydney, and you tell them, hey, go jump on Google and try and find somebody to come to your home to clean your carpets. So with SEO domination in place, what's going to happen is that no matter where those 100 different people are located, and no matter what they type in, all 100 of those searches are going to bring up your business in at least one of those results on the first page of Google. Now remember that just because you're being found in all the top search results doesn't mean that people are going to be actually clicking through to go to your website, okay? I'm going to show you how to make that happen in just a moment. The lesson for now, however, is that at least you're not missing out on 60 to 70% like most SEO satisfied businesses are simply because they're not even coming up in most of the search results in the first place. So lesson number two is that no matter what kind of results you're getting now, don't let a single searcher not find you. You can't guarantee that 100% of searchers are going to click through to your website, but at least aim to be found on the first page of Google for 100% of searches, so that way you're not missing out unnecessarily. So that sounds great in theory, of course, but how do you actually do that? So here's what makes the difference between a super successful SEO domination campaign and a mediocre or satisfactory one. Well, the first and most basic thing is just knowing the correct combinations of keywords that you want to be ranked for. So let's say, for example, you have a mobile dog grooming business. Now, the obvious keyword combination is just dog wash, but different people are going to put different variations of this. So, for example, they might put dog washing or dog washers. Some people, instead of dog, are going to put pet, pet washing, pet washers. Some people are going to replace the word washing with grooming, pet grooming, pet groomers. A lot of people are going to put the word mobile in front, uh, so it could be mobile dog wash, mobile pet grooming. Some of them are going to put plural at the end, it could be mobile dog washers, mobile pet groomers, etc, etc. So lesson number three is to make sure that you're found for all possible keyword combinations, not just the ones that you think might be the most obvious. Now, most SEO guys are going to be able to help you out with the stuff that we've covered so far, but here's the fork in the road that's going to separate the winners from those who don't know any better. So using that same example of dog washing, um, let's say that you're a customer looking for someone to come to your home to wash a groomy dog, and let's say that you're located in, say, Kirrawee, which is a suburb in Sydney, Sutherland Shire. Now, in addition to typing in one of those many keyword combinations I mentioned before, in addition to that, you're also going to type one of the following three things. You're either going to add the word Sydney, you're going to add the word Sutherland or Sutherland Shire because that's your district area, but because you're looking for a mobile service that comes to you, there's a good chance you might also add the word Kirrawee. So look, a few years ago, sure, people were more likely to include the word Sydney, but people are starting to become more Google savvy and they don't want to waste their time. If they search mobile dog grooming or washing or whatever, Sydney, there's a good chance they're going to find a business that doesn't even come down to Kirrawee. They don't want to have to check through the website to find all the different suburbs that they service. The simplest way for them is to just type in dog washing, dog grooming, etc. Kirrawee, their local suburb. Well, that's the logical reason why people include their local suburb name in the search bar. There's a, a, an emotional or instinctual reason too. Let me give you an example. Um, a few years ago, I lived in a suburb called Kings Langley and I remember searching for a, an airport shuttle bus to get me to the airport. And I found two nearby. One was in my suburb of Kings Langley and the other one was up the road in Castle Hill. Now, I very briefly looked at the website, saw that they, they offered approximately the same rates, pretty much seemed the same, but which one do you think I called first? Now, Castle Hill's just down the road. I mean, both businesses would come to me, so I could try and rationalise a logical reason why I chose the one in my suburb, but the reality is a lot of consumer decisions are not logical. They're just emotional, instinctive reactions. One of the first businesses I started years ago was a lawn mowing business, and I get lots of calls from people that were located in my own suburb because they seemed to have this idea that I was just down the road and therefore could just sort of pop over any time or something. And so if I had to schedule them in earlier than planned in the day, they'd be like, well, why do you have to come by now? You're just down the road. And it's like, yeah, but if I'm just sitting around twiddling my thumbs all day, sure, but I've got to go around to all other areas of Sydney try scheduling everybody in just because you're local. Doesn't actually make any real difference. But again, 
People don't often make decisions based on logic when they're in that consumer frame of mind. Next, I had a jumping castle hire business, and I might get a call from, say, someone in Borkham Hills who'd say, well, I'm in such and such street, Borkham Hills. Whereabouts are you guys located? And I'd say, well, is the party at your place or my place? Because if it's at your place, great news is we come to Borkham Hills. Then there'd be this pause for a moment where they'd think and sort of snap out of unconscious automaticity and go, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, of course. So the important point to remember is that there's this powerful sort of instinctual drive in a lot of people that causes them to want to prefer someone that they see as local, both for logical and practical reasons, as well as reasons that aren't logical and just sort of emotional and instinctive. So this is hugely important to make sure that you guarantee a successful SEO domination campaign. You've got to make sure your business website comes up for every single suburb you service, irrespective of where you're actually located. I mean, a lot of my clients might have a head office somewhere in like an industrial factory or even run their business from home. So unless clients are coming to you, they don't need to know where you're located. In fact, it can often turn them off simply because customers often have that instinctual preference for someone that's located in their own suburb. But if you're coming to them, they don't need to know where you're located. See, this is the kind of stuff that those guys who call you from overseas wouldn't understand. They probably never even heard of Sutherland Shire, let alone Kirawee. Whereas local homegrown kind of tech heads, they just go off Google stats rather than real world first hand experience. So lesson number four, in addition to being found for all the possible keyword combinations, make sure that you're found for all those combinations plus every single suburb that you service. Let me give you another example. The, uh, the guy who lives across the road from me where I live now is a pest controller. And his van says Sydney wide. So I asked him one day, I said, well, would you go all the way up to say Palm Beach or all the way down to Bundina, or out to Camden, up to Richmond. He goes, yeah, mate, I'll go all over Sydney. I mean, I don't get a lot of calls from those areas, but, you know, if I did, I'd go wherever the work takes me. Now, this bloke's a sole trader. He doesn't have anybody else working for him, and perhaps if he knew this stuff, he would. Uh, if you search for pest controls in the local area, yeah, you're likely to find him pop up, but in the other suburbs, not at all, which probably explains why he's not getting any calls from there. So obviously he's going to want to come up for words like pest controller, pest control, pest controlling, pest controllers, uh, termite control, termite inspection, pest inspection, cheap pest control, exterminator, etc, etc. So basically about five to ten combinations of keywords. But when you add those five to ten combinations of keywords to every single suburb of Sydney, which has about 600 of them, that gives us about three to six thousand total keyword combinations. So hopefully you're starting to see by now a lot clearer that if you ever get these guys on the phone offering to get you ranked for 5 to 10, even 20 combinations of keywords, tell them to go jump. Alright, so now this is starting to make sense. Um, the obvious question is, how do we actually get ranked for 6,000 or more keyword combinations? And hopefully this will help to paint a clearer picture. So when you're trying to rank your website for keywords that include major cities like Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, etc., highly competitive and very expensive. You get those calls from overseas, that's usually what they're trying to rank you for. Now, the best way I can describe this is it's like um, being on the fields during the gold rush, you know, and everyone's swinging a pickaxe at your head and you've got to try and duck and dive and dodge through everybody else, desperately everybody trying to get down to the river to find a nugget. Now, meanwhile, over on the other side of the hill, there's a lake that's nice and clear and it's full of little sprinkles of gold dust everywhere. Very few people down there, so you can just scoop it up easily all day and by the end of the day, you've probably got about as much gold in your pocket as what you were if you managed to get through all the crowd to find a nugget on the other side. So for those of you watching who really like the idea of really dominating when it comes to SEO, what I teach all of my clients is the concept of the long tail. Let me show you what I mean. So welcome to the office. This is, we've got the whiteboard here. This is where I give private coaching and uh, consulting to our clients. I'm about to give you for free. Now, um, I've got a lapel mic on here too, so that way you can hear me if I turn from side to side. So if I sound a little bit differently, you'll know why. You do not need to be a brilliant mathematician to understand. This is very basic, straightforward stuff. Now, the y-axis represents uh, numbers. So total numbers of searches. Should have been a doctor with handwriting like that. Um, the x-axis down the bottom represents keyword KW combinations, combos. Okay, so all your different, you know, 6,000 or so different keyword combinations, if I had the time and the inclination, I'd write every single combination down the bottom here. And this represents the total numbers. So, now I'm going to use an example. Let's say uh, you're an electrician, for example. You're a Sparky. You want to service all of Sydney. You're obviously the most common keyword combos are going to be electrician Sydney, followed by something like maybe electrical Sydney, followed by 24-hour electrician Sydney, emergency electrician Sydney, etc., etc. So 
big numbers, very high numbers. This represents all the keywords for electricians plus the word Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane, depends on where you are or somewhere else in Australia. Okay, so very statistically relevant here because it's high numbers. But um, still, there's a lot of other keywords still in there. Now let's say this represents electrician for all the um, city council areas. So for example, Sutherland Shire, Hurstville, Canterbury, Bankstown, Blacktown, Penrith, North Shore, um, Northern Beaches, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so the numbers aren't quite as high, but it's a bit wider obviously because there's more combinations. Now here's the part of interest. This is the long tail. And I'll show you in a minute why. These are all the keywords related to electricians, but these are for all the individual suburbs. So electrician, say Glen Alpine, electrician Kangaroo Point, electrician Guy Mir, electrician Doonside, electrician Artarman, etc., etc. The reason, of course, they call it the long tail is because if you can imagine it was a dinosaur with a head up here, his body sort of down here, and then he's got this great big long tail. Now, this graph is not exactly drawn to size because realistically what you'll find is that the tail represents around about 99% of all keywords. Now, a lot of people will look at that and say, well, each of those individual numbers individually is very low by comparison with these big numbers, so they don't worry about it. But if you're targeting all of Sydney or even a significant chunk of Sydney, once you put all of these together, all this area here usually works out to be, and it's going to depend on the nature of your industry, approximately equivalent, if not sometimes more, sometimes less, than all the searches in here. So here's the gold nuggets that everybody's trying to compete there uh, to get in and get, but here's the gold specs. The numbers, again, it's gonna depend on your industry, but the number, the total numbers here is approximately equivalent, sometimes less, sometimes more, than the total numbers here, and of course these ones are in between as well. So the interesting thing is that 99% of the competition are going for these words. So basically, here's where all the nuggets are, here's the high competition, it's gonna cost you a lot of time, a lot of money to get ranked for these words. Here's where the gold specs are, it's a lot easier, so don't get me wrong, I would definitely suggest trying to rank for these words as well, so whatever your trade uh, is, plus Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne. But in the meantime, this is gonna get you some really good results in the, as well, and it's gonna be a lot easier because it's less competitive at the moment. Now, what I've noticed over the last few years is that more and more people down in the gold fields are starting to catch on and starting to head over, over towards here and pick up on this because, well, simply it's a lot easier and it's a lot less expensive, a lot less competitive. So I anticipate that over the next two to three years, eventually this is going to start becoming more competitive as well. Now, there's a lot of different factors that Google considers when determining which sites get bumped up and which ones get bumped down. But one of the most important factors is age or maturation of the site. So in that sense, websites are a little bit like uh, wine or spirits. In other words, the longer they've been maturing, the greater their value. So in other words, um, even though these keywords are less competitive, I have noticed over the last few years, more and more people are gradually starting to catch on. So lesson number five here is that, yes, get ranked for the keywords for every single suburb that you service, but you might wanna take action pretty fast before everybody else starts doing it as well, and then it's gonna be just as competitive as these keywords over here. Okay, we're back here in the studio now. So look, once you hire the right SEO guys to get your website ranked for all the different keyword combinations, including the ones in the neck, the body, and the long tail, the next thing to remember is about how to get people to actually click through to your website. And some of this stuff is really basic and straightforward, but it amazes me how many people forget this very simple yet very important factor. Now, what people used to do generally was often just click the first search result first, and then if they didn't find what they're looking for then, they might go back and click on the second results, and maybe third, fourth, etc. to work their way down the page. Now, I am generalizing here. There are always exceptions to the rule, but as a general rule, over time, what people are more inclined to do now is not just click the first result first, second result second. They're more likely to spend a couple of seconds kind of just visually scanning down the results, looking to see if anything stands out the page at them people will frequently scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and just look up and down and see, is there anything there that stands out to them? Um, and if they don't see anything that stands out to them, they might just refine their keyword search to get different results to come up that's more specific. 
So because people used to just click on the first link first, the second one, second, etc., it used to all be about being this race to the top. So the guy at number one would get more clicks than the guy at number two, who'd get more clicks than the guy at number three, etc., etc. But as things have changed a little bit and as users' behavior has changed, a lot of this strategic SEO stuff hasn't really caught up and people are still just doing everything they can to get to the top and not realizing that nowadays it's more important to actually stand out in the page than just you know get your way to the top. So a lot of uh, mistakes that SEO people are making, they're putting words in the description and the title to try and boost the results up to the top as high as they can and as a result it's failing to stand out on the page and people just aren't clicking through as much. So once your website makes it to the first page search results, the aim now is to stand out on the page as much as possible. Yes, it's good to get up higher if you can, but it's more important to stand out. So put something in your meta description, especially in your meta title, that's really going to magnetically draw eyes towards your website. It's going to get more clicks that way. Now, through years of trial and error, I've identified a specific strategic formula for being able to create titles and descriptions that do grab more attention. Um, I teach all my clients this. I'm not going to put it in this video because it's already going too long as it is. Suffice it to say though, using this specific formula, we can easily make it so that let's say that your uh, website comes up halfway on the front page of Google. So you're sitting there on number five. Um, you put the right things in there, you can easily get more clicks than the person number four, or number three, sometimes even number two, and sometimes even number one. Again, like I said, there's many factors that determine who gets bumped up and who gets dropped down, but when Google starts seeing that you're getting more clicks than the guys ranking higher than you on the page, that's one of the things they look at in determining whether it's time for you to get bumped up the page. So once you make sure you're being found on the first page for 100% of all the different searches, including all the different long tail keyword combinations, lesson six, is to make sure that you design a meta title and meta description that stands out so much it's just going to magnetically unconsciously draw more eyes and therefore clicks so you're going to get more people clicking through to your website even more so than the guys who are ranked higher than you on the page. So the point is to not just get found but actually get clicks. Now there is a secret little trick you'll find up the sleeves of really good SEO guys that can actually double or even triple this effect. So let me show you what I mean. Think of it this way. When you're trying to capture your customer's attention on that screen, the first page results, it's like you're at school, there's 10 kids in the class, the teacher's about to pick who's going to get the early mark, and everybody's jumping up in the air with their hand up in the air saying, pick me, pick me, pick me. And the point is to make sure that you're more likely to get picked, right? So let's imagine now you're like one of those other characters from the Matrix, and you can actually kind of morph or clone yourself so that now you take up two or three kids of that bunch of 10. Now statistically, you're more likely to get picked. So one of the most powerful ways to achieve search engine domination is through a process we call search engine saturation. Or in other words, actually taking up multiple places in the first page results, as many as possible. Now be warned, you've got to be careful when achieving this saturation effect because there are both legal and not legal ways of doing this. And no matter what you do, as soon as you start saturating the search results, imagine how it's going to make your competition feel they're going to start having a hissy fit saying it's unfair and all the rest. But the reality is, look, if you've been smart enough to find the right guys that can help you take advantage of this loophole before it closes, hey, that's business. Now the other thing about saturating the search results with your website is that in addition to obviously increasing the probability of your site being clicked on, you're also creating a halo effect attached to the image of your brand now. So what I mean by that is when people see your result come up multiple times or they see you sort of saturate all over the place, it creates the image or the effect that you are more credible, more professional, more dominant, um, a stronger force in the industry. Just like when you see the same actor's face in different movies over and over again, eventually you start to become familiar with them and that's how they get famous, that's how they get their celebrity status, which as a result increases the value of their presence. So once you're being ranked for all the different possible keyword combinations and then you're standing out of the page grabbing people's attention, lesson seven is to saturate those search results with as much of your presence as possible. It not only improves your odds of being clicked on, it also improves your image. Now here at Hi-Viz, SEO domination and saturation is of course things that we specialize in. But there's a DIY approach you might want to give a try yourself. Now this method isn't exactly going to saturate the search results, but at least it's going to help contribute to improving your overall presence online. And that is simply just go and list your business on as many different directory sites as you possibly can using a specific formula though. 
Now the major problem with directory sites is they often list your location. And that's fine if you've got a shop or a business where customers are coming to you, but if you're going to them, as I've explained already, that can be quite detrimental. Let's say, for example, you're a piano teacher and you travel to your students' homes. Let's say you're located in Carlingford. Uh, just down the road from you is a major suburb area called Parramatta, which has like five, six times the population of Carlingford. Now, say that I'm one of your potential students and I'm located in Parramatta because statistically I'm more likely to be. There's a bigger population there. I look through the directory site and I see you located in Carlingford, but then I see one of your competitors listed here in Parramatta as well. Now, you both travel to me, but as I described previously in the video, instinctually, I'm probably more likely to call the one in Parramatta. And so what we're seeing now is a lot of businesses are actually starting to kind of cheat when it comes to directory sites to get over that hurdle. What they'll do is they'll list their location in the larger suburb area. So using that example, um, you could tell the directory site that you're actually located in Parramatta because that way you're just going to get more results and the directory sites don't actually check. Now, I can't imagine that that's technically legal, so I'm not going to recommend that you do that. Um, having said that, it doesn't seem like anybody's really out there policing at this stage yet. Uh, but what I would recommend that you do is, irrespective of where you put your location, in your description, when, you, when you're listing yourself on a directory site, at least list all the suburbs that you go to. Now this will not only uh, increase the likelihood of that listing coming up in a Google search result, it's also going to attract people who might not have otherwise called you otherwise. So for example, the student in Parramatta, I see the teachers in Carlingford, I'm gonna think, I don't know, do you even come to me? If you've got any search results, hey, I go to Parramatta, Dundas, etc. I'm now more likely to give you a call. So lesson eight is that after you decide you wanna dominate and saturate the search results, you can do your part by getting yourself listed on as many different directory sites as possible and remember to include, where possible, all the suburbs that you service within the description on the listing. So imagine that there was a directory website already set up to help you out with your SEO domination and saturation efforts. A site that doesn't list your location unless the customer comes to you of course, where you just pick the suburbs you want to be found for and you'll automatically come up in the search results for those suburb areas. So if there was a directory site like that, that'd be perfect for businesses, especially trade and services where you're traveling to the customer's home or their office location. Now at hi -Viz, what we saw was there was an absence of a directory site set up specifically like that, so we decided to create one. And that's why we designed the top 10 website. We figured that the other directory sites must be set up by guys good at programming and coding and all the technical stuff, but evidently they don't seem to understand this SEO saturation stuff, which is why we created it. So the top 10 website was specifically and strategically designed by entrepreneurs to help other entrepreneurs such as yourself get the best results. And conceptually, it's a lot easier for the customer to get their header in how to work it too. You know, it's a lot more user friendly. You just pick your suburb, pick your service, and then bam, there's the top 10 guys that do that service in that suburb, done, simple, easy. So now if that pest control bloke over the road wises up and gets listed on the top 10, he doesn't need to put where he's based. So that way people up in Palm Beach, down in Bundina, out in Camden or up in Richmond, they'll just see that he comes to their suburb and that's all they need to see. That way it suits customers and businesses to a T. So then he would start getting calls from all over the place and he'd probably have to start putting on some extra guys just to keep up with the demand too. Assuming of course the growth and expansion is the plan to dominate. So look, by all means, go out and get all that SEO domination stuff done to your own business website, definitely. But in the meantime, lesson nine, is go grab yourself a spot on the top 10 website and do so ASAP too because we allocate listings in order of first in best rest. So go grab yourself a spot now before you miss out. Okay, we're almost done last lesson. Look, the thing you wanna do now is go out and get yourself a good, reliable, homegrown internet marketing team to look after your website and your SEO. And make sure you get someone that understands your industry and knows your market. And of course, here at hi Online Marketing, that's exactly what we specialize in. So look, you've been watching this video for quite some time now, so presumably you would have switched off unless you'd found something really valuable and specifically relevant to help your business in this video. So if you feel that you've really been able to connect with the things that I've been presenting here, the next step is to just fill out the contact form down below this video. Tell us a bit about your business and what we'll do is we'll get in touch, we'll give you a free quote on one of our SEO domination packages and start the ball rolling to secure your business as one of the dominant players in your field. So look, whether you're just starting out and you don't want to risk wasting time and money on a dud, 
or maybe you've even got your own internet marketing guys already and you're just wondering if maybe you can get some better results. Get in touch anyway, we'll have a chat, see if we can arrange something even better for you. So let me tell you a little bit about the type of clients that we like to attract. Um, for our clients, their business is, is more than just their living, you know, it's their passion, it's their, it's their pride and joy. Um, obviously, look, the purpose is for us to help you make, get more leads, you know, bring you in more customers, make more money, um, that's the end goal. But the kind of clients that we attract, it's more than just the money. You know, obviously, if we do strategically the right things, we're going to help you make more money. That's a given. But there's a certain kind of pride to being the dominating force in your industry. You know, if you look at the other competitors that are dominating the internet space online, it's a little bit of a like an intimidating force. So it's about sitting back and watching your brand, you know, your creation start to dominate the internet, becoming the dominating force, and seeing your competitors now trying to keep up with you rather than the other way around. Now, over the last few years, the online marketplace has become a vicious war ground. You know, all your competitors out there too, they're all getting those calls from overseas as well. So everybody's starting to get into the race to try and get on the first page of Google, and it's becoming an absolute, you know, it's a battle zone. So there's also a sense of safety and security in knowing that you've got high vis online marketing backing you up on your side, going into battle for you. That's what we do. That's what we're all about. So lesson 10 is the most powerful and important message of all, which is get high vis online marketing on your side straight away. We get you more customers. It's that simple. So all the stuff in this video was about how to get your business more highly visible online, how to get found in search results, and how to get people to click on your website. Here's the thing you need to know though. The journey that a customer takes from the time that they click onto your website through to the time that they actually become a good quality customer for you. That process is a lot more complicated than a lot of people realize. Now, the last thing you want is this website that's really highly visible, getting all this traffic coming to it, and then people leave or they don't you know, take action and become a good quality customer for you. So by this stage, I think you've seen enough of me talking to know whether or not what I'm saying is worth listening to or not. So if you found the information in this video really valuable, you're absolutely going to love the stuff I've put together for you in the next video about strategic web design. Some of the stuff I'm going to show you is basically once you get new leads arriving at the website, first thing you want to do is filter out the tire kickers, the time wasters, the cheapskates, etc. You want to attract the good customers. But also, you want to make sure that by the time they've contacted you, you've already injected the right thoughts and feelings into their mind, strategically using your website to do so. So that way, by the time you've got them on the phone, they're already primed to become great customers for you. So if that sounds like something you'd like to see, just click on the link down below where it says Web Design Sydney, and that's going to take you through the video about effective web design strategies. So remember, go grab yourself a spot on the top 10 website ASAP before you miss out. Click on the link down below where it says Web Design Sydney so you can find out the most effective web design strategies as well. And also, remember to fill out your details in the contact form below. That way we can get in touch with you, we'll have a chat and find out how we can help you really dominate your industry's online presence, which I'm assuming is exactly what you want to do. I'll talk to you soon.